we're offering this through Illinois Soybean Association um, as part of their checkoff funded research. And um, yeah, so we've gotten um, samples from all over the state um, and the sample numbers have been everything from zero SCN eggs per 100 cubic centimeters um, to in the thousands, so all over. The latter folks probably have a, a reduction in soybean yields, I have a Yeah, so the ones that we saw were above 10,000 eggs per 100 cubic centimeters, and that's what we would consider very uh, severe infestation, um, where you're definitely going to be getting yield loss. So if somebody has neighbors who are getting soybeans in the 60, 70, 80 bushel range, and yours are only 40 and 50, this is something you probably want to take advantage of. I think so, and I think, um, you know, with, with soybean cyst nematode, it's really, you can't diagnose it above ground. So you can't see any, you can't, the nematodes are all below ground, um, feeding on the roots, so you don't see them. And the above ground symptoms of the plants are really nondescript. So you don't see, you know, horribly wilting plants or dying plants, but at the end of the season, you get fewer beans. Now, for somebody who uh, uh, will be getting Re results back, I'm assuming they go back. Correct. What, should, what action should they take? Uh, well, it depends on what the results are. So if, if you're getting a low number, um, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, you're probably planting a resistant variety already. Um, most of the uh, commercial varieties on the market have resistance. Um, so even if you don't know that you're actively managing it, you probably are in that, in that sense. Um, and then the question is, well, what do you do if you have a high number? And I think um, there it gets more complicated and depends on what you've done in the past. So um, if you have been planting resistance, um, it's very likely your resistance is being derived from a, a single genetic source called PI88788. Um, so PI just stands for plant introduction. Um, and this has been a really valuable tool for SCN management, um, but it's a tool we've had around for the past several decades, and, and we've been using it and using it and using it year in, year out. And you know, just like with herbicide resistance, you use the same tool over and over and over again, and, and nature has a way of, of fighting back. Um, and that's been the case here, that uh, the nematode hasn't stood still it's started to develop the ability to overcome that resistance from 88788. Um, that ability to overcome it is not 100% is not across all soybean fields, but we're certainly seeing it in many places across the Midwest. Um, certainly planting those 88788 is better than planting susceptible. Um, there's still good protection, um, but if you have been planting that source of resistance and you're still getting high numbers, you really want to start thinking about switching up the source of resistance. And, and right now, the, we don't have a lot on the market, but the one that is um, available in our neck of the woods is derived from another source called Peking. Um, a lot of times you can find that when you sort of dig into the, the seed information. So the seed bag, will seed bags indicate the, the source of resistance or at least maybe you could uh, contact the seed company? You could certainly. And they yeah. would probably get, be able to get an answer for you. Yeah, so if, I'm not sure about the bag, but certainly the company will know. Um, a lot of times if you, if you go onto the company's website and you, you know, plug in a individual variety, um, most companies will include in that seed information where the resistance is derived from. Now we've seen some headlines about a third one coming up, something called GM Snap and da, 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 something else. Right. So, so is this a something that uh, may be really a third alternative in the future years here? Yeah, so I think, I mean, and I think, so yes, it, it's an it's a alternative in future years, so not currently available. Um, I think that uh, industry as a whole is getting a me getting the message that SCN has has started shifting in its ability to handle 88788, and they're they're looking for alternatives, and so they're exploring other sources of resistance. Um, also thinking about things like RNAi um, as a biotechnology trait to to control it. So I think 
you'll see more options in the future. Tell me what goes on in your lab that uh, uh, deals with uh, soybean seasoning with those. So we do everything from really applied research, um, working with companies to, let's say, test seed treatment. So um, that's another um, alternative control strategy farmers might explore if they're getting really high levels. So there's a dozen or probably more than a dozen different seed coats um, that are being advertised um, for efficacy against soybean cyst nematodes. So we do some of that. Um, testing for companies in the field, but we also do some really basic research trying to just figure out, okay, how, how does the nematode, you know, survive? How does it get around? How does it feed? So really sort of digging in deep to, to the biology of the, of the nematode to try to find out, okay, what are some potential weaknesses that, that we might um, take advantage of? Are they like corn rootworms that uh, kind of drown in a heavy... Uh flooded uh, situation, uh, does that impact uh, soybean cyst nematodes? It, it would have to be a really long-term flood. So they, they do require oxygen, but um, you know, if the soil is, is flooded for a few days here and there, that's not gonna be enough to, to really knock them back. Yeah. You know, going back to the free testing, so um, your audience can, can contact us um, by emailing free SCN testing at illinois.edu. Um, or you can just Google uh, free SCN testing and <laughs> you'll get to the same website. And you know, we'll, we'll answer that email and um, get back with information on sampling strategies. Um, we'll send you a, a sampling kit. Um, and we can also pay for the shipping to, for, for you to have that sent in to us. And then, we'll get the results back to you with a little bit of information. If it is at a really high level, um, we also will do what's called a HG type test. So a HG just stands for the, is an abbreviation for the Latin name of, of soybean cyst nematode. Um, it used to be called a race test. Um, and that's basically just gonna give us an idea of what sources of resistance out there will that pop, your particular SCN population um, be able to grow on. Um, so it might be, provide a little bit more information on, on control strategies. So it might say that it will grow well on PI88788 and it will also grow on Peking and you decide, well, I'm just gonna plant corn in that field. Yeah, so that, I think that's a, that's a really good point that um, you know, soybean cyst nematode has a fairly restricted host range so it does not feed on corn, doesn't feed on wheat. Um, it's basically soybean, and then there's there's a few um, a few weeds that out there that are that it can grow on. Um, one that actually we're we're starting to look at in my lab is uh, is pennycress. So there's been some interest in the use of of pennycress as a cover crop or or alternative oilseed crop, and there's some data from Purdue probably about 25 years old now, that shows that in the greenhouse, SCN can reproduce on pennycress. What we don't know is, well, in the field situation, since pennycress is a winter annual, will there be enough time for the nematode to, to reproduce on it? So that, that's something we're, we're starting to look into. Um, obviously, it would be concerning um, if there is enough time for pennycress to support SCN reproduction.